Now, are you taking a trip to France for Easter or trying to? Well, best of luck for you. Uh, delays at the port of Dover have seen people waiting up to 16 hours to get onto a ferry. I tell you, some of the pictures coming out of there are just staggering. And the situation has been described as a shambles. And the, the port, and they were forced last night to put on extra ferries to try and clear the backlog. Well, the port has blamed lengthy French border processes and sheer volume. Let's get a breakdown of what is going on on the political side of this from Lettice Bromovsky from Young Voices uh, UK. I mean, it's interesting, Lettice, isn't it? I mean, the Labour Party jumping onto this and saying, well, the government's really got to sort it out. Is it within the government's gift, do we think? I think it's particularly unsurprising that they were jumping on this and Kistar was making those comments. I mean, this is sort of one of those classic easy wins for them where he can, you know, attack immediately on the government's point because, like you were just saying, you know, this is not working. Something is really wrong here. We cannot have that every holiday season, every travel season, people are having to wait upwards of 16 hours, 20 hours for, for just to get through, to get out of the country. Um, and we need to have a system that works. Um, and so while I, you know, there are some things where this could be just to do with the Dover port, I think that a lot of this stands between UK and French relations at the moment. Um, and I think that French police are not doing their part to help this. It was only in uh, July last year that there was another row at Dover um, when newly installed French police booths were left unmanned, leading again to huge traffic jams. Um, we're currently going through a process right now, which has been delayed in Brussels, where we're trying to get this new system in, this new um, entry exit system, which is run essentially off of fingerprints and facial recognition, which would get rid of that very slow process of the police and French authorities having to stamp every passport. So hopefully once we get that through, this will get better. We need the technology in place that will help this, and that's got to come from the government. Yeah, it's not necessarily the government, though, as you say, to, to sort it out. I think the, uh, the CEO there is called Doug Bannister, and I hope that he, he might be prepared to come and talk to us a bit later on in the programme this morning and tell us exactly what it is he's doing to get people moving. But it's interesting that Keir Starmer has waded into this because yesterday I saw that um, Mandelson, of course, you know, the, the, the grandee of the Labour Party, actually mm. came out and said it's time that Starmer was a bit bolder, that he's got to come up with a few more powerful brushstrokes. <laughs> And it's no good just sneaking over the finishing line at the next general election. He's just got to come out with something that's, uh, that's, that's a bit stronger than he's doing at the moment. Do, do you think that, um, I mean, I think Man Mendelssohn is the first person that's actually been brave enough to come out and say, Starmer, you're mm -hmm. not quite doing the job that we expect of you yet. Is that going to make a difference to him, do you think? Um, I think definitely within the Labour Party, Lord Mandelson, as you're saying, he was one of the architects of New Labour. He's got a lot of influence. He's got a lot of power. Um, and him saying that is it's a it's a big statement. He is demanding this fresh thinking and boldness. Um, and quite frankly, you know, I think that is what we need. There have been many issues where Starmer has been on the fence about it, whether that is over strike action, whether that is over the gender recognition bill. You know, there are many issues which need Starmer and Labour to showcase that they can lead this country and be strong enough to define their own opinion and what that means on it. Um, on the NHS, actually, at the same conference, he was very, um, he praised a lot Wes Streeting, the Shadow Health Secretary, that um, NHS needs reform and that we shouldn't be uh, defined only our measure of ambition by our spending. Um, and I think that's so right. The NHS does need reform. And it's, it's very healthy to hear that that also is coming from Labour now, that the issue isn't working. It's massively over budget. We have this continuous backlog. Um, and although Labour have been ahead in the polls, a lot of people will say that that isn't due to Labour winning and Keir Starmer's great leadership, but because of the Conservative failings we've seen over the last three years. Is there a danger in, in an intervention by Lord Mandelson, though? Because, as, as you say, he is sort of the man behind New Labour, and that has mm -hmm. a tainted image, doesn't it? I mean, you know, Tony Blair is, is not popular within the Labour Party and not within the Parliamentary Labour Party, or a, or a lot of it. So, so does that sort of intervention actually damage Keir Starmer rather than help him? Um, I don't think that it would damage him in any way. I mean, it's showing that there is clearly some sort of, you know, tensions behind the scene that perhaps people don't think Keir Starmer is doing enough for his party and he's not 
being bold enough that even though they are ahead, as we were just saying, you know, more needs to be done here. But I don't think it as such is damaging him, more hopefully pushing him in the right direction to be making these bolder moves and these bigger steps. And, you know, the, the general election really is just around the corner now. So he's got to be thinking about the bigger picture. We've got to have confidence that if Labour does get in, which is the way it seems to be going right now, that they will be able to run this country. It's good to see you this morning. Thanks very much indeed. It, I mean, it's